Welcome back to a new video on asynchronous programming in F -sharp. We introduced the concept of asynchronous programming in the last video, and today I want to introduce something called the actor model. The actor model is the way, main way that we write asynchronous code in F -sharp. and the way you would think about actors is like an individual entity within your program running on a separate thread, if you will, that is able to message other actors and only communicate with other actors through the means of sending and receiving messages. The reason for this kind of model is it allows you to split up the code in a very good way when it comes to, for example, locking different objects. So you know in C Sharp, if you have shared resources, you would need to lock them in order for different threads to be able to communicate or sort of make changes to that. The way of an actor model allows you to do that in a rather neat way. But that's sort of taking it several steps ahead. So for now, we're simply going to introduce sort of a very simple actor and then build upon that going forward. For us to be able to do this, we will utilize a already predefined class in F -sharp called mail processor. So we will define this thing and we'll sort of explain it as we go. So we are going to say messenger is equal to this mail processor or mailbox processor. like that. And this predefined class has a method called start. Like so, let me just clean up the code and then we can continue like that. And in here, you would define a function that describes the functionality that happens whenever this a message is posted to our mailbox processor. So what this mailbox processor is, is essentially a queue of messages that you can receive and then we can sort of print them to the console. So we will define a function here and that will have one input parameter called inbox. And that is also corresponding to a predefined type that we'll see in just a second what significance that has. But for now, let's just keep on with the definition. So in here, we will define a function, a recursive function called loop. Like that. And this will be an asynchronous function. So you're familiar with the fact that we need to use the async keyword in this case. And in here, we would then provide our corresponding implementation. The first thing we want to do in this is to listen to some message that a user would send or another actor. We would then use the let bang keyword. So whenever we use these asynchronous tasks, the let bang keyword is what we would prefer. And then message is going to be inbox dot receive. So this inbox parameter is a special type that's also predefined and that has a receive method. I know that a lot of this is just taking stuff for granted at this point, but uh, in order to introduce the concept, we can't explain too much in this video. But this inbox parameter has a receive method. And when we call that, that will essentially wait until we receive some input to our mailbox processor and then store that into the variable that we defined here. So what will happen is we kick this sort of functionality off. It waits until anything is received to this mailbox processor, and then it stores that into message. Once we have that, the rest is quite simple. So what we can do then is just print whatever we got. So we will simply say received. And then here we will print the string. So message like that. Okay. What we need to do then is we actually need to return. And here we reduce return bang. And we would provide loop as the return. So this returns the loop and it's a recursive function. So this will just keep on running once we start it because we don't really make any progress here and we don't have a terminating condition. And the reason for that is we want to keep this mailbox processor running for, well, uh, until we close our program, essentially. What will happen is we will get stuck here when we kick off our mailbox processor and we will wait for an inbox or for a message to arrive at our inbox. We will print that message. And if we didn't make this function recursive, it would simply terminate and then our mailbox processor process would be finished. But we want to make this recursive and we want to return the loop so that when we receive a message, we can simply continue with the mailbox. Okay, so we've returned that. And the final thing we need to do is we need to actually kick off this function that we now defined. So we will say loop here and then we can finish off the function. So that's the definition of this mailbox processor. And in order to show that that works, what we will do is just say messenger dot post and post is the predefined method that you would use to send this some form of message. And in here, we would provide a string. We built this method 
now to accept strings because we are assuming a string here where we print it. So this is not very robust yet. We can't, for example, handle integers because then this will crash, but we'll provide a string and we'll say hi. So to show you this works, let's run this and we'll see what we get. Okay, you can see that the thing we received now is hi. That's something we print to the console. If we want to execute this multiple times, just to show that the process is running continuously, I can execute this a few times and you'll see that each time we do this, it prints received high. So this mailbox processor is continually listening to whatever messages we posted. And that's the way we normally run asynchronous processes in F -sharp. So this is sort of its own actor. It runs independently of everything else. We can post messages to it and it will take that and sort of manipulate the input or do whatever functionality we specify to it. And in future videos, we can also see that we can send stuff back from this actor. So not only does it receive things, but it can also send things back. And this is the independent unit that you would sort of use in creating your programs. That's where we'll cut it for now. This is just a very quick introduction to the actor model and we'll build upon this in the next video. But for now, that's how you can define an independent unit called an actor that is able to receive messages from your program.